Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is David Nates and if you guys know me personally or have been following my channel, I was born in Belgium but I'm living in Los Angeles. I've done a couple of other videos where I speak about my favorite VFX films and other related topics, but I haven't given too much love to Belgian cinema. What you must understand about the cinema in Belgium is that it's very different than what we expect here in America, or even other countries where amazing cinema is being made. Belgium does do quite a few movies that are being filmed throughout the country, especially French movies because we have something called the tax shelter where the Belgian government gives huge tax incentives if films are shot in the country and with a majority of a Belgian crew. It's a win-win situation because it creates employment in Belgium, it also gives money incentives to producers. That being said, every year there is one or more movies that really stick out of the lot and even though they usually have small budgets, they have a lot of heart to them. The first movie that I'd like to speak about is called C'est arrivé près de chez vous, which was released in 1992. The English name for the movie is Man Bites Dog. I'm not sure how they decided on that name because the literal translation for the French title of the movie is It Happened Near Your Home, which is much more fitting as this movie is a very dark mockumentary style film that would rival any Tarantino movie. The whole mockumentary is filmed in black and white and was done on a super shoestring budget by four student filmmakers led by director Rémi Bellevaux. It tells the story of a serial killer which was portrayed by Benoît Poulvourde, who later became one of the best known Belgian comedians acting in many Belgian and French films. Funnily enough, he goes by his real name in this movie. The film follows a crew of filmmakers following Ben Poulvourde, the serial killer, recording all of his crimes as part of a documentary. At first, the crimes seem pretty petty and nothing to brag about, but as the film progresses, they find themselves in weirder and more violent situations. Here's an interesting fact. The original poster of the movie suggested Benoit killing a baby as we see splattering blood in a pacifier where the serial killer's gun is, pointing at an unseen target. It was very quickly censored not to show such gruesome violence. This movie is a marriage of nightmare, humor, and awkward laughters. Each scene is more gruesome than the next, sliding into very humorous phases to quickly retransition into darkness. Intentionally disturbing at times, it really shows the raw reality of violence. C'est arrivé près de chez vous upon its release won the International Critics Award at Cannes. This movie will be funny for some and in some ways appalling to others. If you like movies such as Pulp Fiction or Reservoir Dogs, there's a big chance that you'll get a kick out of this one. The second movie that I'd like to speak about is Dikenek, which was released in 2006. This movie isn't technically 100% Belgian because it's a Franco-Belgian comedy with many French actors, but also has a ton of Belgian actors and is shot in Brussels and the surrounding areas. Plus it has 100% Belgian humor, so I feel that I can justify it being part of Belgian cinema. Dikenek comes from the world of Dike and Neck, which literally means thick neck, but it's actually used to describe a person who is arrogant, disdainful, full of themselves, and overly proud. The movie follows the life of a few eccentric characters under the pretense of Steph and JC looking for the love of Steph's life. As the director Olivier van Hofstad says, this movie kind of resembles all the silly things that young people may do and the interesting characters that can be seen in the Belgian countryside. One of the most interesting characters in the movie is portrayed by Belgian comedic genius François Damien. He is best known in Belgium for creating real-life pranks throughout the streets of Belgium in the mid-90s to early 2000s. In Dikonek, he portrays Claudie Faucon, an over-the-top character that seems to live life in his own little bubble. He sees things and does things the way he perceives them, often not actually seeing the truth of reality. There are many people in this world, and the director Van Hofstadt illustrates many similar situations that he lived growing up in Belgium. This movie also has a cast of very known names such as Marion Cotillard that ended up acting in big movies like Inception and The Dark Knight Rises, to name just a few. What's interesting about this movie is that it didn't do too well in theaters but slowly garnered a cult status through video on demand, television and various streaming services. Sometimes it's like this with cult movies. They do bad at the box office but manage to garner small followings throughout time. This movie is a simple Belgian slice of life with a lot of dark humor and eccentric characters. In some ways, this movie encompasses all the interesting characters that can be encountered in every Belgian family, people we meet on the street, cafes, bars, or the Belgian countryside. Looking at this movie, I can only get that nostalgic feeling of seeing such familiarity in every scene, even though in an exaggerated depiction of reality. 
The third movie that I'd like to speak about is the 2009 movie called Les Barons, which simply translates into The Barons. The movie follows the life of a group of friends that create a philosophy to life, dubbing it being a baron. So in order to become one, you need to be the least active possible. The belief is that each individual on earth has a limited number of footsteps before he or she dies. Once you've exhausted all your steps, you die. So by doing the least possible in life, you end up inevitably living longer. This for me is a movie that has enormous heart. The main character of the movie, Hassan, dreams of becoming a comedian, but is also in love with his best friend Munir's sister, Malika. Torn between being in the whole vicious circle of unemployment, his dad not acknowledging his son's artistic side, pushing him to simply become a bus driver, Hassan finds himself lost and often coming into conflict with his best friend Munir. All this creates an enormous tension throughout the movie that is relatable, yet humorous in many ways. After all, life is often a mixture of happiness, sadness, and sometimes a farce of trial and error that brings us through an incredible journey. This is another Belgian movie with a smallish budget, but with deep cultural values instilled throughout the story. The thing about watching foreign films is that we get to visit and get exposed to different ways of thinking and cultures that we might not even know exist. The Belgian Muslim culture is very intertwined and something that is worth exploring. The fourth movie that I'd like to speak about is a 2009 movie called Mr. Nobody, which was actually shot in English and directed by Jaco van Dormaal. If we're talking about big budget looking films in Belgium, this is it. Mr. Nobody is exactly what my dreams of Belgian cinema have always been since I was a child. The movie tells the story of Nemo Nobody, a now 118 year old man who is the last mortal on earth after the human race has achieved quasi immortality. The story goes back and forth between his past and current present, starting at initial hardship at age 9 when he is standing on the train platform where his parents are about to separate forever and he is brought with three choices, stay with his mother, stay with his father or simply not make any decision at all. By not deciding, his life splits into three different possibilities, each creating different lives and hardships that create even more alternate realities between the future women that he falls in love with and the difficult life choices that come from simply being an adult. The whole movie is built on philosophical themes and the M theory of multiverses, which is a hypothetical theory in which there is an infinite amount of universes coexisting at the same time and separated only very slightly to comprise everything that exists. The entire space, time, energy, information, and the physical laws and constraints that describe them. Or in simpler words, for each action there is a separate universe within an infinite amount of universes that present every possible possibility. This movie, when it was first released, was critically acclaimed for its cinematography and music composed by Pierre Van Dormaal. The film was nominated for seven Magritte Awards. Even though this movie is amazing, I must say that for someone who is just looking for entertainment, they may not like it as the whole narrative is completely non-linear and might require multiple viewings to actually understand it. What I found is that I was completely confused the first time I saw it, but after watching it a second time and really focusing on all the details, the story gets clearer and more amazing. This is the kind of movie that has an enormous amount of depth and makes one dream about the different choices and how each choice will bring us into a different path in life. The fifth movie that I'd like to mention is a 2008 movie, JCVD, directed by Mabrouk El Meshri. Starring Jean-Claude Van Damme, this movie is loosely based on Van Damme's real-life circumstances, albeit modified to make it more dramatic. The movie starts at the Zaventem airport in Brussels, where Jean-Claude is going back to his childhood home in Skarbeek, a commune of Brussels. To put a little more backstory, the director chose to show a couple of flashbacks where they present the star as heavily in debt and losing custody of his daughter. On his way home, he stops by a bank in order to retrieve a wire transfer and gets stuck in the middle of a bank robbery. The media inadvertently catch a glimpse of Van Damme and accuse him of being the leader of the bank robbery. JCVD is a beautifully executed movie where the bank robbery sets a chain of events where Van Damme can explore many of his real life ghosts. One of the robbers is actually a big fan of the action star and keeps talking to him and also shows him a few uh, controversially cryptic interviews that he had done in France a couple of years ago. The star, having lived in America for so long, sometimes has a tendency to mix English and French combined with a cryptic philosophy in his speeches that resulted in him being made fun of for many years. 
This is actually based on real life interviews. Then later on, Van Damme goes ahead breaking down in a uniquely interesting six minute monologue where the fourth wall is broken. He explains his rise to stardom, mistakes that were made along the way, his ups and downs. As mentioned, this movie is not an action flick and definitely very artsy in many ways, but shows a depth to a person who is often only shown for his outward physical appearance and action expertise. For me, this movie was extremely inspiring on a humane perspective. After all, no matter how much popcorn movies can be fun, if we cannot find the characters relatable and some sort of hook to the story, then there wouldn't be any reason for the audience to root for the protagonist's success. This movie has heart and really shows humanity in all its characters and the relationship that he builds with the bank robbers. As you can see, Belgium has a ton of unique movies ranging from black and white dark comedies to big budget sci-fi fictional dramas. All these movies are made in completely different circumstances than the big Hollywood industry, showing a side of the world that maybe not everyone is familiar with. The world is a big place and discovering foreign cinema is a portal to another world. So take a look at Belgian cinema and hopefully explore movies from a variety of countries. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I certainly feel nostalgic having revisited movies shot in my home country. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. And if you are interested in knowing more Belgian movies, let me know and I'll be glad to do a second part to this video. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.